This week on Waifus Weekly, Dragon Waifus. Dragons, dragons, dragons. A proud people known for their power, knowledge, and pride. Absolutely magnificent creatures with tons of forms, from the classic Lord of the Rings style dragons, big lizards, scales, and such, to the no winged serpent style dragons of, well, Asia, with multiple types of ways to show off their beings. Some have fur, others even have feathers, some don't even have scales. But what can I say about dragons? Well, they are awesome. With tons of variety, we have some of the benevolent dragons who only want good things for you, chaos dragons who only want to rule over the world with you at their side, and many others like the baby dragon I cannot help but feel paternal towards, the sad dragon I want to hug and tell them everything will be alright, and of course the thick dragons I just want to give my warmth to. So with plenty variety, we need to speak to one to get the mindset of a dragon and how they see these petty mortals. So please welcome back the dragon Nason from another world, the always lovely dragon, Jaquela. So Jaquela, what can you tell mm -hmm. us about dragon waifus? Okay, well, it's easier to answer questions than talking off of the top of my head, so you know, pass away. Okay, so starting off, what makes mm -hmm. dragons unique from other, let's say, fantasy waifus? For one, we're dragons. We are otherworldly. We have... You know, this question is kind of hard to answer because I'm wondering what kind of answer you expect from me. Well, we're dragons. Um... That's true. Mm -hmm. There are there are multiple ways to describe a dragon, but I'm look well, we're looking for more hmm, how should I say? Like things you wouldn't expect. We we know that what a dragon is unique because they have horns, but then you can say a lot of a lot of other species have horns. Let's say Oni. We can say that some species of um how should I say wolf people have horns. Well, particularly mm -hmm. at least at least Zeno because she was here last week and she was <laughs> half dragon, but yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, okay, I'm going to be honest. No matter what, it will be dependent on what you find desirable. I can't say that every dragon will be the same and because every dragon is, isn't the same, it's kind of hard to say like, oh, dragons are otherworldly, they can travel through different dimensions, we're strong, we're loving, we know how to protect. And there are many things that I can say that are, I guess, quote unquote, general things that dragons supposedly do or are. But at yeah. the end of the day, no two dragons are the same. And everyone has, and all dragons have different power levels and different things that they will do and not do, respect and not respect. So it's kind of hard to generalize that, yeah, dragon, you should have a dragon waifu because, you know, we're strong or we can take you to different dimensions. We can um, cure you of illnesses or, you know, destroy the world with uh flick of her tailors things like that because not all dragons are capable of doing that every dragon have different has different power levels and you know like a normal like earth dragon is different from like a celestial dragon you know oh, yeah, so that's true, true. it's kind yeah. of hard mm. it's kind of hard to just say like yeah but if you want um an honor an otherworldly being that is like the pinnacle of living life forms then it would be a dragon okay that's that's fair there are dragons are remarkably powerful and they are known for being really strong magic users that being <laughs> said what are, mm -hmm. what are um, how should i say this be, being a dragon you and having these these kinds of powerful magics what are the best types of magics you'd say would benefit let's say um let's let's say let's say you ha let's say your hubby or your waifu 
Like, what kind of magic would be the best for them as a dragon, of course? Mm. Well, personally, the for I'm from my dimension, dragons are able to use all types of magic, even mm. magic that hasn't been discovered in other dimensions before. Well, or even this dimension, um, which you guys don't even have magic, but well, not you, but like yeah. in this dimension, Mo- most um, people don't. Most people, well, unless they're like from, unless they're like, um, what's it called? Like an orc or, you know, like Zeno or people of not this dimension. They're here for different reasons, but they didn't originally originate from here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But like normal human beings, they don't have magic. Um, well, I am very versed in magic. I am capable of using all types of magic. So it would be a better question to ask, what can't I do? That's fair enough. Um, no- knowing that you are both a fire and a wind dragon, what makes that... Uh, what are some oh. pros and cons to mm-hmm. do with that? Like compared to, let's say, um, the other types of dragon, let's say an ice dragon or an electricity dragon. Uh, like, what are you. things that you um, get that you have that are better and or worse compared to those guys? Because you are well, a half air and half fire dragon, right? Yes, Just I confirm. am. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Look at you getting all the details. <laughs> um, <laughs> asking all the hard hitting questions. Hell yeah! That's the that's what we do here in Life is Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> hard hitting journalism right here. Um, okay, so everyone from my dimension can use all types of magic, but when it comes to dragons and being um, like an air dragon or a fire dragon or a lightning dragon or whatever, yeah, um, we're just more powerful in those types of magic. We can go to another level in those types of magic. So for me, my weakness would be like water, um, like a water dragon, not just like normal water magic, but a water dragon would be my weakness or like... Mm-hmm. But then I would also have air. But like, because I'm a hybrid, it's more like my fire magic and my air magic will never be as strong as like a fire dragon or just an air dragon. Right? Like a purebred kind of thing. Yeah, a purebred. But Uh. what is very interesting is that when I put those two um, elements together, it becomes much stronger than either of them combined. Than than both of them by themselves. Okay. Using ear, to, using ear to make your fire more powerful, kind of situation. So you could basically conjure a fire tornado, then. Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of something. Ask. <laughs> yes, exactly. But that's something I had to learn. Oh, um over time by you know practice and wanting to not be left behind by my other pure bird dragons or whatever okay that's fair that's fair there are plenty of dra- there are plenty of people who are well half breeds or at least um share similar qualities to the more popular type of people for example well like last like what we were just talking about last week's episode which was hybrids wherein we discussed mm-hmm. with, with Zeno um the pros and cons of being a dragon and being a wolf but to get combining those together is what really makes her unique so in your case yeah. you're just a fire and a wind dragon uh, crossbreed basically basically yeah okay i guess we can now move on to the next question um yeah. when it comes to dietary requirements most uh most uh how do i say this most media <laughs> mm-hmm. likes to depict dragons as being more carnivorous in nature would you I say know. this is true i mean besides the this... matcha of course <laughs> this dimension is very interesting honestly the way in which they depict dragons is honestly quite boorish honest um it is because in my dimension we don't eat humans first of all humans do not exist and we do not eat other life forms there um Mm, like we don't eat humanoid peoples like um we don't eat oh sorry we don't eat human humanoids like elves or dwarves or whatever um what i can say is that I've been to many dimensions and I've been to some dimensions where there were dragons that, you know, ate. 
you know, beings that weren't dragons. So I'm not yeah. going to say that. I'm not going to say that you will never have a dragon eating a human being. I will say that I won't. Don't worry. Fair. Yeah. I d- I don't need I don't need you to I don't need your human substance. I don't need your human bodies to satisfy me. <laughs> fair, fair. Don't worry. G- give me matcha pocky and we'll be good. <laughs> don't worry. I won't eat. I won't eat your head. Just give me matcha pocky. <laughs> but, but but just to be clear, you do eat meat though. Like generally speaking, of course. Yes, like, I do eat, eat pork meat. And so on. Yes. 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 Orc. Orc. Huh. Pork, Did you not say orc? orc? Pork. <laughs> like, oh, I have an orc friend. I would never. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Izzy's gonna kill me if she sees this video. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, she was here like a couple episodes back, but yeah, that's that's a whole thing. There are just mm. way. There's just many variations to the dragon diet. Okay, on on your personal opinion, as a dragon. There are there are also plenty of depictions of how dragons really enjoy eating, particularly, well, in the the European style of dragon, wherein they usually go for livestock, particularly sheep. Would you say that that is accurate? With lamb, um, lamb being a more favorite type of food you'd eat, or are you more on the sea dragon type of thing, wherein fish is the more um, preferred option? Hmm. Honestly, either meat is meat. <laughs> okay. Fair um, as long as it's um, you know, I don't like raw food, so I won't eat like a lamb raw. Like uh, just the live, I true, won't yeah. do that. I would rather have my meat cooked. Otherwise, meat is meat, and I love it. <laughs> true, true. On and, that note, and sashimi this, though. Mm-hmm. Since oh, we, sashimi. Do, we do know you are living in somewhere in Japan because of your yes. new of your situation. Yes, yes, yes. Um, sashimi is actually delicious. Believe it or not, I really do like sushi. Sushi, sashimi is the exception to the no raw meat. Exception. <laughs> true, true. I, I don't think I've met other people, other beings that has eaten raw meat on, well, often. I did try eating raw beef before when I went to um, Korea. That was an experience, of course. Uh, they they serve nah. they serve it similar to sashimi, but you could cook it, but you could also eat it raw, which is strange to me. But it tasted interesting. How was it? Ro- how was it raw? Um, it's exactly how like how how you think it would be, like like exactly like sashimi, but as beef. I don't even. Th- Does it have a taste? I'm just. I'm just. It I'm has just a like taste. It. It, it it tastes exactly like how you think, but it wasn't. It wasn't actually that bad. Like as a lot of people, as a people might think it would be. It was actually pretty okay, but yes, I prefer it if it was cooked, obviously. Ah, okay, okay. Kind of like fish sometimes. I suppose that's just like everyday things. Okay, next. This is actually a, a rather strange question, but what are some cons about living as a dragon? Like in, let, let's say, living as a dragon with a human, with a human spouse. You of course you have the horns and the, <laughs> we have the horns and the tail sometimes which would get in the way uh-huh. as what Zeno uh-huh. said last time. But what mm-hmm. else would be like some cons with living as a dragon? Mm. Well, personally, right now I have to be in a humanoid form. Like my wings and my tails um, are actually sealed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm currently not able to really use them as much. Like be in my like my real humanoid form um mm-hmm. but like if i was to be in my real humanoid form with my tails and wings out and everything one thing i could say my claws might get in the way as well because they grow very fast oh, so, fair enough. so that, that... that yeah so that might be an issue where you know it digs into the skin <laughs> i mean some people will like that uh... but i mean it can yeah. get very dangerous <laughs> at times as well and i do have the ability to secrete um poison at times but that's something i can control so you know i wouldn't actually do that. you can secrete poison that's, yeah. that's new like like let's like from where like just from your skin yeah from my nails from my skin from my teeth it is um ah. one of the magic abilities that i do have 
but they said like controllable, I, of course. Yeah, it's controllable. So like, in if I do that to you, I really do want to kill you. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, on the bright mm-hmm. side, okay. Um, on the bright that side, and, you are yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I would uh, also say yeah. fans, my fans, my team could also be in the way <laughs> at times, maybe. Uh, that's that's fair. That's true. I have, I have to admit, the the, fa- the fangs are an issue, and having generally sharp teeth, like well, like mine, are can be a bit of an issue for some situations. <laughs> if you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't need to know. <laughs> 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 uh, that's one way. That's one way of saying it. Yes. But I. But um, back to Zeno. I think the tail would make it very much very fun. Like think of it, like a lami, lamia, being able to wrap you up in their tail. Because mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I'd be able to wrap. Mm-hmm. Considering you can actually change. Well, you you particularly can change your form. You could, well, do that. Like extend your tail, make it bigger, thicker, and so and so on. That is what mm-hmm. some people are into. into. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Like you? laughs> Can't deny that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there it's it's just that it's a versatility of just um having this much magical power, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Well, regard regardless, what are um, let's say, what are some things that people don't expect from a dragon, like uh, like in a relationship, ah. of course, in a relationship settings. Oh, in a relationship, okay. For one misconception that a lot of this, a lot of people in this dimension have, is that dragons like to hoard treasures, or that we live in a cave and you, we just hoard all the treasures. And I'm just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So in that sense, I think people would think that we're money hungry or whatever. But I'm like, I mean, who in this dimension isn't money hungry? You need to be money hungry if you want to survive in your dimension. That's without fair. money, you're going to be living on the road without any, without food or anything. So yeah, everyone here is a little money hungry to at least survive. Um, we don't always go out <laughs> and hoard our treasures. At least I don't hoard my treasures. <laughs> So that, you don't true, have yeah. to. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about dragons being money hungry or like gold diggers or anything. If if a dragon wants money, they would more likely be able to get it themselves with their. <laughs> I think Abilities. most dragons are very charismatic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think most dragons are very charismatic as well. So that's another <laughs> thing. And I feel like because there's a uh, what. There's a con. Um, what should I say? There's a stereotype that dragons are scary, as well. So oh, yeah. I like people think that like dragons would be like the dom or the dominatrix or the really, you know, scary spouse or our lover or whatever. And sometimes we just want head pads. I made a tweet about that um, a couple months ago. That stop trying to fight us. Sometimes we just want to have our head pads. That's it. That's really it. We're not that scary. We really are. We really aren't. That's true. There are. There are. Yeah. Let, let, mm-hmm. Let's say, let's say uh, let's talk about one of the things I actually brought up earlier in the video, which was of course Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid. We have people like let's say Toru or Kana. They both just want head pads a bunch, and that's just what like some dragons want. They're not always the hyper dangerous um, beasts that all that media like to depict them as, and mostly video games. But that's just for gameplay reasons. Exactly. Just, I was yeah. I was just about to bring up Kobayashi um um sad anime. I'm like, look at the dragons in there. Look at them. Look at them. Most of them most of us just want hugs and you know head pads. Especially if it's from our lover. One thing I can say, dragons are possessive. At least I am. So if you're in a relationship with a dragon, be prepared for that type of possessiveness i'm not going to sit here and tell you that not all dragons are yanderis because we're not all yanderis and you know i'm not a yander or anything like that yeah, but yeah. i can be possessive of my lover that i guess that's the one thing that could be a downer 
But if you love your dragon or your dragon wife, you, I think you would be happy to have, you know, a possessive girlfriend. At least, and um, as long as she's not crazy, you know. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> like, some people, but, some people just want mm-hmm. a clingy waifu with them, and if that's a dragon, that's a plus, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Going to be like, you're mine. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not like you'd be hugging and then a girl walk past and she like makes her disappear. Nothing like that. <laughs> I would never do anything like that. <laughs> I'm joking, by the way. I would really never do anything like that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> But but yeah, it's just the well, it's the classic thing about how dra- how dragons really are are different from like what most be like to like to portray them as, mm-hmm. and like big it really scary, differs, yeah, Word. it really <laughs> differs between um, like their depictions. But most depictions, mm-hmm. like like let's say in Slice of Life, like to depict it as a more versatile range of waifus not always the type where they are scary but but that does that can happen but of course they are they aren't just that let's say for example they aren't, yeah they are they aren't one dimensional they aren't just scary like they can be scary if they need to but they're being caring protective um, motherly yeah. you know it's no no dragon is just like oh scary big rawr like girl <laughs> it's not it's that there is no such thing and yeah like, like okay let, let's let's bring up an example from miss kobayashi of course let's say fafnir the dark demonic dragon he is the scary type of character but then when you like looking further he actually really does care about his friends just not the same way as toru or um ilulu those kinds of characters this it's just a personality difference but that isn't meant to be to generalize all dragons and if they are evil they do have a reason to be or it's a misunderstanding for example well Il- particularly ilulu who is my favorite character from miss kobayashi because mm-hmm. of what she went through she started out as an evil dragon that's but that's because of her upbringing and the writing of that of that part was just remarkable it actually made me cry a few times when i when i heard about that because of how she started out like how she started out as being very angry and hating all humans only because of how her upbringing was even when her village was attacked by like let's say quote unquote evil humans because we're actually not sure about those humans her parents were killed and she was left orphaned, but she still wanted to be friends with some humans because she understood that there was a difference between the ones that attacked her village and the ones that she used she hangs out with like as her friends. Exactly. The sa- that that's that's something I really want to um say I agree with. Like not all humans are the same, not all dragons are the same. Like there are some evils, there are some really great people. To look at someone and say, Oh, this person that kind of looks like you was really mean to me or an awful person so that means you must be evil too is crazy yeah it's just it's just incredible on how people like to generalize things okay let, let's say let's let's say um fire elementals fire elementals are described as being more demonic of the elementals we have well we control fire and fire is always seen as the bad thing even though fire is also the what helps cook food generate electricity we fire isn't a general tool of war it's also a tool for life it also helps people and you can use this for all sorts of things oh i got burnt once with fire that doesn't mean that all fire is bad it's just things happen and there are just differences wherein you have to just work through it because that's just how things are not everything can be just generalized as pure evil or pure bad because you know people are different it's just how you treat those people that changes and treat them with respect obviously exactly we need to be able to differentiate between bad and good people based on their actions not on our um, preconceived um, misconceptions of them Just because someone hurt you in the past does not mean that a person that looks like them will hurt you too. Yeah, pretty much. 
there, there's also like different personality types. Some person who you think might be me might turn out to be actually your best friend in the future. You can't just exactly. generalize someone of just how they look, obviously. Be- people can be different from how you think they are. Just give them a chance, you know? Exactly. Sometimes you need to open up your heart and stop looking at things with such dark colored um, glasses. <clears throat> That doesn't that doesn't mean to say that every person out there you have to be friend because some of them oh, no. are really True. are really bad. There are some people who exactly. are absolutely toxic. Trash. Which is why I said don't um judge people based on their actions. I was um, what, saying that, yeah. You yeah. should base people you should um judge people based on your actions if someone is doing something shitty if someone is an awful person to you hurt hurt you or even hurt others like you shouldn't only judge them based on how they interact with you but also judge them on how they interact with other people that is very telling just because someone isn't an asshole to you doesn't mean they're not an asshole to someone else and if you see that be sure to judge them and that person isn't good for you. You need to be able to tell, look for yourself and not only be selfish and be like, oh, they're not mean to me, so I guess we could be friends. They're only mean to this person who's ne- never done anything to them. Like, really think of it. Because the minute it switches and they are mean to you, will you still want to be their friend? Yeah, I, I completely agree. That that happens way more often than we'd like to admit. We have experienced this. Yeah. Some people, let's say, some people like like Jod because she was a powerful dragon, and it turns out that mm-hmm. they're only liking her because of that. They didn't actually like her for her personality, and she is a mm-hmm. wonderful person, as you guys can see. People have hated me just because of the way I talk, the way I am. They hate me because I'm just a cyborg. They do, they prefer like pure, pure biological well beings. I showed I was a cyborg, and they immediately didn't like me for some fucking reason. <laughs> this happens so so way off, way often for us to we, we we don't want it happens so often it's just disgusting behavior it's just something people should watch out for not not just between fire elementals and dragons of course like everybody everyone should watch out for that but just try yes. to keep an open mind for that for people of course mm. don't cast them out I feel there like are... we kind of went off topic <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. That, that's what we do here in Wife Weekly. We discuss everything under the sun, not just well, this not just far as Yeah, <laughs> we we discuss as much as possible because that's what people come here. These are that's why people like this show. <laughs> well, okay. So the best the best thing the best thing about dragons we've already discussed from. Why you want to date a dragon? <laughs> what are their dietary requirements, and what you you should watch out for? Now, lastly, what are some what are some as um, hmm, how should I explain this? It's a bit touchy, and by touchy, of course, I'm, I want to talk about what are some dragon mating rituals. <laughs> 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 Hold on. Can I ask what other people said before me? Okay, um <laughs> I like the, the, the question. We we actually have I actually have two highlights which I should probably release late like um as a as short. One is Izzy, wherein she discussed and how orcs orcs from the historic from her historic history books actually shared in plenty of harems. That's because ah. of their lifestyle mm-hmm. of no of of no of no basically nomads just likes to move around but they're also also always constantly under attack so the most viable option for them is to get the biggest strongest guy make them the leader and give him a harem basically every woman in the village will you can Sex. Ex- mm-hmm. yeah. I was about to say something to you I'm sorry um, you know <laughs> have love time and 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 hug yay <laughs> Yeah. Also, <laughs> the fact that that um, it's more compatible to have a human male and a female orc than a female than a female human and a male orc, because human uh, male orcs do not last long in bed, allegedly. They don't last long in bed. Female orcs, yeah. I guess. That- Oh, both, oh, both oh. male and female. But it's better for the female to not last long because. 
Yes. <laughs> it's going to be sad. <laughs> It'll be a very sad, sad time. But um, as for the other case, let's say let's say with Nozzy on the Goblin episode. Um, goblins are tiny. They are versatile, and of course, they like to reproduce. Ah. They they ha- they have so they go libido, very they go, ah so they go constant right mm-hmm. yeah so that being said for orcs and for goblins what can you say for well dragons well for one most dragons have a lot of stamina and <laughs> <laughs> like, we do have a lot of stamina <clears throat> and I can say that all of um. Dragons live for a very long time. So we've seen and most dragons have seen and done everything that you can think of already. So I think you would have more dragons being more exper there there are two sides. You see a dragon being very experimental with things because they've done or seen so much. Or mm-hmm. they'll be very con um um they'd be like they wouldn't try anything new because they've already done it all. So you have uh, two versions that could actually, you know, you that you might end up with. Ones that want to try and push it to the limit, like whatever that limit is. Like, what else can I do? Keep, keep going Where further. else can I go? Yeah. Keep going further. And then there's others that are just like, yeah, no, nah, I did this already. I'm pretty sure I've done it all. Yeah, it, mm, it's okay. <laughs> I've done this. <laughs> Dragons, especially if you have a dragon that's really in love with you as i said they're very possessive they will give you a lot of aftercare as well like not even aftercare, but a lot of snuggling cuddling time to spend with each other like how do i say this so just very affectionate it's a lot of yeah very affectionate yes that's it they're very affectionate as well um i can say this have you ever had sex in... Oh, uh, I mean... Uh, have you ever hung in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a unique way of pointing it. But yeah, no. <laughs> but, I, I, yeah. I, but surely some people might be really into that. Yeah, um, I can say that... Personally, I love hugging in the sky. It is a great pastime. <laughs> Once you've had it, you will never go back. Um, well, and... that's one way to do. That's one way to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more thing: dragons do not like harems at all. We that... do not have the same things like with orcs, where they would want to find one strong male to continue the population and everything. Dragons are very long-lived, so it's never um, like a worry about, oh, we're going to die off or extinction or whatever. It's more that it's rare for dragons to have children because of how long, long-lived long they are as well. But it's never a situation where, oh, we're going to go extinct because we're, not, we're never in a situation where we are being killed off. <laughs> In a, in a sense, you, yeah, you get me? I think I think that's what mm. you mean. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just like not... you, since you, mo- you live a mostly peaceful life, you aren't really yeah. being targeted by like some other races. But that also yeah. doesn't mean well, that you then... need to reproduce. Yeah, exactly. So when a dragon reproduces, it's that it's one hundred percent out of love or out yeah. of necessity because there might be family. You know, it's from my dimension. It's a very peaceful place, but you know. Pure bloods and um, different hierarchies of yeah, powerful yeah, yeah. people wanting to keep um, connections and stuff. So you know, there there are things that happen not only not because of love but because of necessity. But you know, yeah, it's yeah, fairly yeah. peaceful, so we never have to worry about oh we're going extinct, so we must continue the bloodline. It's it's never that. Oh, okay. That 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 makes plenty of sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think that's that's enough. But is there anything else you oh. want to add to before the end? Yes. Like anything you want to talk yes. about for dragons? Yes. Cheat on a dragon, and you might see your end in the most vicious way possible. That's it. 
Okay, that's one way of ending the video. That's one way of ending. Back to the video. <laughs> As you can see, dragons are absolutely lovely creatures, and we should cherish every single one of them. Except for this one. This one's pretty weird. 